and welcome back to the URM Academy YouTube channel where we train you, the next generation of audio professionals. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the small bell button to get notified whenever we put up another great video for you. In today's video, one of the most wizardly engineers I've ever known, Mr. John Douglas, is going to show you how to time align vocals with elastic audio. When working on vocal production, using doubled, tripled, or even quadrupled takes is just a fact of life. If those takes are not rhythmically tight with each other, before long, you'll end up with what sounds like more than one vocalist at best, and a total mess at worst. And the vocalist you're working with will not always be able to track it again. You may be out of budget, out of time, or the vocalist may simply be out of stamina and you could risk injuring them by pushing on. Knowing how to correct these inconsistencies will free you from less than ideal rhythmic performances. This video is just one small part of our much bigger fast track course, Vocal Tuning and Editing, which is available in our URM Enhanced program. More details on that at the end of this video. Let's get started. So the second half of what we're gonna be working on to really make sure that our vocals sound polished and professional is the timing. It's amazing how much more polished your vocals will sound just with the doubles and backgrounds aligned with your lead vocals. The ends of words lining up and that sort of thing. Consonants, S's, our ears can detect the subtle things and sometimes we don't consciously register it, but it really makes a difference in the overall impact on the song. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways of doing this. First, using elastic audio, which is Pro Tools version of time stretching. Now Pro Tools uses a version of the Elastique algorithm, which is also used in a bunch of different DAWs. If you actually go to their site, they have a list of all the DAWs that have licensed their time stretching technology. So it's basically the same thing in Cubase and probably other DAWs as well. So just because you're not in Pro Tools doesn't mean you can't get these kind of results. Now at the very least, even if you don't do any time stretching, you're gonna wanna make sure that your lead vocals and all your vocals in general are at least pretty much in time on the grid. So we're just gonna listen to the, uh, the leads here, which is yell lead one and yell lead two. And we're just gonna nudge those around until they feel as close as they're gonna be without us doing any time stretching. So let's listen. The weight that pulls you in the grid. So maybe we're a little bit ahead here, but it's pretty close. And then again here, maybe just a little bit ahead. Let's bypass that lo-fi effect for now. A little bit rushy, except for the very end. That one's pretty rushy, so let's go ahead and drag that back just a little bit. Now I'm going to show you what to look for in the waveform so that you kind of can visually sense where words are beginning and ending and where the consonants are, where the vowels are. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now that we've got those roughly in the place that we want, what we need to do is make sure that Elastic Audio is enabled. Uh, I already have it enabled on the, all these vocal tracks by default, but if you don't, all you need to do is go here and check Polyphonic. If you're using another DAW, you may need to check the manual in order to learn how to turn on uh, this sort of Elastic Audio or time shifting. So the next thing we're gonna do is select all our tracks that we're going to be time editing with Elastic and we will hold control and command and then go over to the analysis page and delete all of these markers that Pro Tools has so nicely created for us. And then hit control command right to go back into our warp view. Now we can start placing warp markers and manipulating the audio. So let's start with this first part. That's actually pretty much perfect. If we zoom in here, you can see the vowel kind of opening here. This sort of waveform indicates kind of a vowel opening. And then again here, we have a little bit of a consonant opening into a vowel in weight, the weight. And then the end of the word weight ends right on this beat, which is exactly where I wanted it. 
So that's fine. Let's go to the next part. Okay, for this one, we've got a little bit of pushing and pulling. So what we'll do is set a warp marker here in the beginning where this is pretty much lined up with the grid and keep that timing. So we got that pulls U. If we look in here, I'm thinking this part of the waveform is the P in pulls, and then it kind of opens up into the U. You'll notice these sort of uh, different looking waveforms where if you have more of this sort of waveform, that indicates a vowel, whereas you have this more percussive sound, that's more like a consonant. So we're going to place a warp marker here, and then just drag this. We can actually switch to grid mode, and then just drag the marker to snap to the grid. And then same here, we have pulls U. So we're just going to grab where we think that U starts to open up. You can kind of see the waveform here. We'll just snap that to the grid. And then we have a little bit of a timing change here. Now this is kind of a loose phrase, and it kind of plays on the beat. Let me play it for you again. So what I think I'm going to do here is just make sure that this last word is lined up correctly, and then we'll feel out the other two syllables. So what we've got is grave. So you can see the GR, and it starts to kind of open up into the A right here. So we'll place a warp marker. And then let's look at the end of the word. Now since the next word starts to come in, we don't want, to want too much overlap. And I think I want this word to end more on the beat. So let's shorten it up just a little bit. We could even try pulling it back more, and you'll see how flexible this elastic audio algorithm is. When the grave, when the grave is hung up. I think we could actually split the difference there. Just have a little bit of overlap. When the grave is hung up. That sounds clear. Now we can get kind of the end of the grave. It overlaps with the next line, but not too much so that we're smearing the words and we can't tell what's going on. All right, let's keep on going and we'll go to the the end of this lead one track here. So it sounds like the end of the phrase is a little more on time than the rest of the phrase is. Especially this last vowel, light. That's pretty much right on the beat. So let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit. We've got, you can even use the scrub tool if you're not sure of what you're hearing. So you can kind of tell where the vowel opens up, and it's somewhere in here. So we'll just snap that to the grid. And again, as you do this more and more, you may not even need to listen to the audio. Uh, this is something I kind of picked up from Joey's uh, Creative Live class, where he really goes over um, identifying different consonants. Similar to tuning, you could just do your edits, without really listening, and then check them by listening, and then do any small edits after that. This can really speed up your workflow. But for now, let's be real careful and make sure that we're getting everything just where we need it. So, let's get this examined. So, the E starts right on the downbeat here. And then we have a vowel opening here, right on the downbeat. This examined, you see the M opening up into the I right there. And then same here, in, we have the in opening up right there, so let's pull it back. We may even want to let it rush just a little bit. Let's see how that feels. Maybe a little more. Oops, split the difference. Okay, good. And it looks like this syllable is just about where it's supposed to be. Let's 
let's go back and just check this last little phrase here and make sure that everything sounds right. I notice that these two syllables aren't really on the grid, uh, but you could tell from the performance that they're supposed to be a little bit floaty and in between. So we're just gonna leave them like that because I like how it sounds. Okay, next we need to fix up this lead to yell. So let's zoom in there. Looks like the is is right on the beat and then hung right here up. Let's listen. Two, we have the syllable, or we have the consonant T in two, and then it opens up into the O. And in this one, let's see what we have. You can pull this left back a little bit. And then again, dry is dragging a little bit, which may be okay for dramatic intensity, but let's see. Let's try pulling it back right on the grid and see what it sounds like. I think maybe just let it drag just a little bit. Pretty good. Let's check out the tail of that. Maybe shorten it up just a little bit. Okay, good. Now, if you want to continue using Elastic Audio to do time alignment, what I would do is then take the doubles and make them about the same size, and then you just look right alongside it and just try to mirror the, the edits that you did on the lead track. And this can go pretty quickly. Again, we're just doing it by sight, really, and then we'll check the result later. We'll do the same thing for this track. You'll notice that once I get moving, this goes pretty quickly. You might think that timing editing everything by hand would be too tedious to do for a whole album, but I have done it, and I've done it on albums that have over 100 vocal tracks, so it's not impossible. Let's go ahead and align this last little phrase here. And then we will solo them and make sure that the timing sounds good. All right. Let's solo these out with our click. Oops. The weight that pulls you in the grave hung up left and right. Almost. We missed this one little syllable here. I'm in the light. All right, good. Generally, I like to do elastic audio and time edit all of the lead tracks, and then depending on how much time left, I will either do it manually using elastic audio on the rest of the tracks, or I will use revoice or a vocal line to automatically align the backgrounds to the lead. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Newsflash, vocal tuning is a must. It's not cheating, it's not a shortcut, and it's not gonna smash the life out of your tracks. It's a requirement for any modern production, even with an exceptional vocalist. My name is John Douglas. I've been editing vocals for over 10 years, and I've worked on everything from metal to children's music. Today, I'm gonna show you how to tune vocals for a song that I did with my band, From Exile. Vocals are the centerpiece of a mix in just about every genre, and a great vocal performance is everything. But a great performance with the kind of dynamics, energy, and emotion that draws the listener in won't always be perfect in terms of pitch or timing, and that's where vocal tuning comes into play, to polish out the small imperfections that simply don't fly in modern mixes while preserving the raw emotion that makes it a great performance. With all that being said, the difference between good and bad tuning can completely make or break a song, and I'm about to walk you through everything you need to know to make sure you do it the right way. 